Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Today's a garage day and we're going to be doing some work on the trailer. And the reason for that is that it's the end of October and I do my maintenance this time of the year, but also Storm Babbitt is blowing outside. So uh, in this video, you're probably going to hear the garage doors rattling and there's quite a lot of rain coming down outside. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the wheels and the bearings and stuff. The trailer has done an awful lot of miles. We've been up and down to Cornwall four times and I've been across the west coast of Scotland uh, loads of times. I, I would say that we've probably done around about 8,000 miles or more. So uh, an awful lot of miles has been done on this trailer. So giving the wheels a spin, they're really smooth. We're not getting any rumbling or anything going on there. These bearing buddies have been really good, I think. If we pull off the cover, inside you'll see there's a, the little blue plastic thing. Is, uh, it's got a spring behind it. When you pump the grease in the center there, it gets a little positive pressure in there, and the spring just keeps a positive pressure against the grease. That's always been pushed into your bearings, and I think that really helps to keep the seawater out of the bearings and prolongs the life. So these bearings are nice and smooth put the cap back on. The thing I have noticed though is the tyres. I've not really had a problem at all with running little 8 inch wheels on it. They do look a little bit lost <laughs> in, in the wheel arches there. But what we've got is, I don't know whether you can see this, but the little 8 inch wheels have got, um, the tread has gone. As I said we've done about 8,000 miles so um, the tread has disappeared in the middle. I did look on the website for the Wayfarer dinghies and they're a similar weight to this boat and they'd suggested running these at about 50 psi. I, I, I think that's too much for me. It, it looks like it's actually sort of worn the center out rather than the sides. That implies to me that the pressure's been too high and we've been running a sl slightly bulged tire. But nevertheless, for a little 8-inch wheel with a very small circumference, I can get that word out there, circumference, um, it does a, an awful lot of revolutions um, going down to, to Cornwall, etc. Um, when you consider your car's got 16, 17-inch wheels on, 8-inch, you know, that done half turn very quick. So um, what I'm thinking about is changing these. And when I was looking on the website, um, there's not a huge price difference between the 8 inch wheels and the 10 inch wheels but there are significant differences so your 8 inch wheels the 6 plies um, 6 ply casings on these will carry 335 kilos each in terms of weight and they've got a sort of slightly lower speed rating than the 10s okay so let's just put that to one side for a minute. So here's our 10 inch wheel. Lots of grip. So with the 10 inch wheel, this is a 500 by 10. This particular one has got a speed rating of 79N, which I think means you know, rated for 80, 85 mile an hour or something, which we'll, we'll never do with the trailer, but it's kind of nice to have that extra margin. The larger wheels can also carry more weight and this one's 437 kilos each so uh, it's got a, a lot more margin for you know carrying the boat uh, it means that the tire itself is under less stress really because it's higher rated the other thing about these bigger wheels is that you've got a much bigger circumference which is obvious which means that it's going to rotate less times per mile um, that less rotation is going to mean that I'm going to get more wear out of these tyres. It also means that uh, the hub is actually spinning at a slower speed. So the actual bearings, I think, will get a longer life out of those as well, which is a bonus. Um, and I guess if they're going round slower, they're not going to get as hot. So again, that's, that's another bonus for it. The other thing I like about these is that you've got a good deep profile to the tire, which I think is going to, you know, absorb the bumps in the road a great deal more and give the boat a smoother ride on the trailer. So that's, that's important. 
The actual fitting here is exactly the same as the little wheel. And if I put them side by side, you know, there's a huge difference really. You know, um, two inches, what's two inches? Um, it makes a big difference with these little trailer wheels. Even, even the width, you know, if I pick that up, you can see the width between the two is, is quite significant. So these, I think, are going to be a significant improvement on the boat. Price-wise, as I say, uh, I think the little 8-inch wheels for the six plies seem to be about £48. Um, for these, they're about 56 58 something like that. So it, it's not a huge difference in terms of the price. But I do think we're going to get greater mileage. And I do think we've got a lot of advantages about going down this road of changing, changing the wheel size. There's another wee advantage is that uh, I've also got another little trailer, a tip trailer, and that's on 10 inch wheels as well. So uh, it'd be quite nice just to have one spare and swap it between the two. But I only tow one thing at a time, so that's easy enough to do. When I was looking at these after I bought them, um, I did notice that you can get a 10 inch by uh, 145 tire, which I think may be a more modern tire, possibly uh, a little bit lower profile, maybe a little bit better tire. Should I have gone for that? Well, it's quite nice if you've got two trailers and they all run on exactly the same tires. You know, you can swap things around a bit. One of the things I do with, uh, with the boat when it's here in the, in the garage is I put it on axle stands so I've not got the weight on the tire creating flat spots. Just lift the weight off the, off the wheels and suspension. And I think that helps the long life of everything. So if I've got 8,000 miles out of the little 8 inch ones, I want a few more miles out of these. Another thing that we're going to be able to do is with it being a bigger tire, you should be able to run this at a lower pressure. I'm going to try it at about 40 PSI to begin with. Yeah, I've already said this hub configuration, the four inch hubs, um, with this cutout for the grease nipple, will actually fit straight on. But we've got eight inch mud guards. There's a lot of space here. We may get away with it. I guess we might not. The other thing was that I've always said, I like having the little boat in the garage. And one of the reasons why I'd not actually bought bigger wheels in the past was that I'd got some brain fog. <laughs> yeah, I suffer from brain fog. In that I'd thought, if I have bigger wheels and she's higher off the ground, then it won't get under the garage door. It's close enough as it is. But the thing that would catch on the garage door at the top there is the navigation light on top of the cuddy. The cuddy's over here. If I drop the nose of the trailer with the jockey wheel, drop it down, the cuddy lowers. So as long as I lower the jockey wheel right down at the front, then we can get the boat in and out without it catching the roof. So we can actually have the bigger wheels and it still get under a standard garage door. So that's a bonus. I don't know why I never thought of that. I don't know why I never thought of that before. I just thought, it won't, it won't go in, it won't go in. But think about it. Drop the front down and she'll come in. I know you're screaming at the screen thing. That's obvious, Phil. Why didn't you think of that? Well, I didn't. So there we go. That's the, the bigger wheels. So let's put them on and, uh, and see how we get on with things and see how these mud guards go. I'd already slackened off the wheel nuts.
Okay, so we're on, and as you can see, we've got some clearance, but very close here. There's not an awful lot of room. So, yeah, you could you could probably get away with that, but what we're going to need to do is have, have room for the wheel lock. And I think that's going to be just too tight to get in uh, and get underneath. So in order to fit that, um, I think that we're going to have to we're going to have to go for the 10 inch mud guards, which just give us that little bit of extra space there. So in order to fit the 10 inch guards, I'll take these off. And the bracket that supports it is like a 25 mil box section, just steel box section. A couple of holes drilled in it to bolt it onto the chassis. And it's got these two little arms that come out here in which you can bolt the plastic mud guard onto. So I've got some 25 mil box in the shed and uh, from another job. So what I'll do is fetch these brackets off, take the mud guards off it. Uh, I'll cut the ends off and put a new section of 25mm box on it so that we've got a longer piece on uh, and then we can put these new mud guards on. Um, probably just bung it in the pillar drill and get the holes into it in the right place to actually match up the chassis. Um, give it a good coat of uh, galvanizey type paint. Uh, I think they call it Galfroid or some, some silver paint will do I think for that. Um, 25 millimeter box is quite thick it's not going to rust through anytime soon so I'll have the bigger mud guards on uh, put these reflectors on and things and just bolt those on um, and give it enough room to to ensure that we can get the wheel clamp in but we're not getting too high here to, to foul the the lines uh, the straps it isn't something I'm going to be able to do today because it's pouring down with rain and um, as a rule, I do not weld inside the garage because, you know, there's just so much flammable stuff in here. You've got fuel over there and you've got things that go on fire. So I do all my welding outside in the garden. Um, so that's something that's going to happen when we get a dry day. If we get a dry day, storm barber, clear off for God's sake. I've had enough of you already. So all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with that. I, you know, I think that fits in there nicely. And, I think as I've explained, there's lots of advantages to, to having the bigger wheels. Um, I think that's gonna make a significant improvement to the trailer. Um, I will be using the torque wrench on things uh, before I finish the jobs. This is just temporary in the garage. Um, we're not going out anywhere at the minute. So uh, yeah, uh, pleased with that. I think that's gonna make a big difference. Um, I've also noticed this one says it's got, uh, the little wheels have got an inner tube in them and these are tubeless. So I, I think probably the tubeless tyres are maybe a better design, uh, I don't know really. Uh, inner tube sounds a bit like bicycles to me so I, I just think, you know, it's a, it's a good upgrade really on the trailer. As I say, I've had no problems at all with the little 8 inch wheels. As I say, uh, four trips to Cornwall, lots of trips over to the west coast. I didn't, never had a problem with them, but I do think stepping up to the 10 inch, uh, it's a good opportunity. Um, yes, it's cost me more money. Uh, it's cost me probably about an extra 20, 25 pounds for the wheel tire combinations um, together. It's probably cost uh, another 14.95 each for the mud guards. So yes, it has cost a bit more money, um, but I think it's a modification well worth doing and uh, be pleased with that. Other jobs for this year um, over the winter, uh, probably drain the oil out the engine, the Tahatsu, and uh, put a new filter on, put some fresh oil in, uh, just sparkle that up a little bit for, uh, for the next season. Uh, I was looking at it the other day and the oil is still a lovely, lovely golden color. So, uh, so that's great. Um, I think everything's doing all right there. It's not done masses of hours, I suppose, in comparison to a commercial fishing uh, engine or something like that, but um, might as well put some fresh oil in and a filter, it's, give it a treat, you know, look after it. Um, I'll probably also run it up uh, in, the, in the tank, so I'll use my wheelie bin tank, uh, run it over a couple of times during the winter just to get fresh fuel through it, 
Um, I'll put some new E5 in the in the tanks here. Just probably put a couple of a, a liter in or something like that every now and again, just to to get fresh fuel into the the carburetors and things, so we don't get things gummed up. Uh, that should keep life uh, nice and happy. The other thing I've got here, maybe you can see, it, is my trailer box, and the trailer box goes everywhere with me whenever I'm towing. Uh, in that trailer box, the yellow box there has got um, a couple of uh, spare hubs. Um, it's got uh, several sets of bearings. Um, it's got castellated nuts, washers, split pins, all the tools that I need to actually refit, um, completely refit, new hub, new bearings, etc. Um, I've got this sort of what if uh, kind of mentality, you know, what if a wheel flew off, you know, and, uh, and I lost it. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm just like that. So um, with a, a bottle jack that I keep in the back of the car, I can always jack this thing up, uh, completely service a hub or change a hub if I've got a problem with it um, and get back on the road. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. Um, it is a good upgrade for me. I, I, it suits me, uh, it may not suit everybody. Um, some other people may have the 13 inch wheels, etc., etc. but yeah, these work for me. Um, as I say, the only downside I can see, um, perhaps, is the cost of change. Maybe a couple of extra inches on the trailer is going to mean you have to back the boat in a, to the water a little bit further. Time will tell with that, you know, to be honest. It, it comes off the trailer, slips off quite nicely on the rollers. So um, I replaced all the rollers a couple of years ago. Um, so, hey, yeah, great. So next time you see the boat, she'll be on a 10 inch wheels and, uh, and I'll feed back to you, see what I think of it. I reckon it'll tow a lot better. I reckon it'll be a lot smoother on the road. A uh, lot less jiggly. Yeah, good. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you stuck to the end, good on you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, we'll see you again in the next video.